My parents spent a lot of time traveling for work when I was growing up, so I spent a lot of time surrounded by a lot of kids who didn't speak the same language as me. That didn't stop them from inviting me to their sixth birthday party in Kenya or building sand castles with Japanese tourists on the beach in Hawaii or even practicing yoga on the cliffs of Comoros. I don't speak a word of Dzonga, the national language in Bhutan, but that didn't stop this old woman from wrapping her arm around me and taking me for a walk around a temple in Peru. There are billions of people in the world that speak nearly 7,000 different languages and dialects but there's only one language that the vast majority of humans can understand. In my opinion, the most useful language you could ever learn is body language. Our body posture, how close we are to one another, our facial expressions, the way that we move our eyes and our visual contact, how we touch ourselves and each other, the way that people sweat and fidget and point in different directions says a lot about how we're feeling and also what we're trying to communicate to each other. Body language in travel is huge. So stop slouching, put your head up and your shoulders back. Carry yourself with confidence. Look like you know what you're doing and that you belong there, even if sometimes you don't feel like you do. I cannot tell you enough how much carrying myself with a smile and positive energy has impacted the quality of my travel experiences. Just take a moment to think about the animal kingdom. Predators prey on the weak and vulnerable, and the same is true for humans, which is why when you're traveling, you need to be fully turned on and aware of your surroundings. When you carry yourself with confidence and you know what you're doing, where you're going, what you want or what you're looking for, you're able to portray this energy that most people don't want to harass because it's easier to take advantage of someone who doesn't have that kind of confidence. When you're traveling in a place where you don't speak the language, it's always very important to be prepared for scenarios when you're not gonna be able to find anyone to help you. So what I like to do is always having a offline map downloaded onto my phone so I at least know that I'm able to get around independently without having to ask for too many directions. Always be very friendly and respectful when you're asking people for help, even if they don't speak the same language as you, because your intentions and energy is something that can be felt regardless of your words. Learning a few words of the local language when you're in a new country is important not only because you'll be able to ask where the toilet is or how much something costs, but it's also a sign of respect and in that way even learning how to say hello and thank you is always helpful. The only language that I speak fluently is English which always surprises people because I've traveled to every country in the world so basically I've just been miming my way around the world. Personally, I always try to learn a few words of the local language when I'm traveling in a different place, but apparently I have the memory of a goldfish because I always forget everything I learned after I stop using it. For me, learning a few words of a new language has actually been more useful as a comedic relief than anything because I have an inescapably bad American accent. It's so bad that whenever I try to speak French in a store, for example, the person working there will just roll their eyes and immediately switch to English because they would rather have to speak another language than listen to me pronounce everything in a really painful way to listen to. <laughs> 
I've gotten a lot of comments on my videos saying that I speak way too slowly and to be honest I was never actually aware that that was something that I've done until I started making videos and I spent some time trying to analyze why I speak the way that I do and I think that I slow things down and really try to pronounce all of my words as a courtesy to people who know English but it might not be their first language. When you're in a different country and you're speaking to someone whose first language might not have been English and you start speaking really fast and you assume that they understand everything you're saying because what American doesn't think that everyone that they know and everyone that they're talking to doesn't understand exactly what they're saying and they go really really fast and you ask them all of these different things and you can actually watch their eyes glaze over because they're not actually comprehending anything that you're saying but if you slow down and take a moment to let them translate what you're saying in their heads I've found that leads to having a much more organic and more understood conversation if I'm traveling and someone wants to shake hands then we'll shake hands if they want to hold their hands in prayer position or bow, then I'll mirror that. What's always been such a funny social interaction with body language for me has been the cheek kisses. In American culture, we're all about the hugs, but it's so funny whenever I'm being introduced to a friend of a friend and they go in for the double cheek kiss or even the triple cheek kiss and I go in for the hug at the same time and their whole body just tenses up and they get super uncomfortable because they weren't expecting me to just press my whole body <laughs> around theirs and it's just one of the best awkward interactions you can have when you're traveling and it's definitely one of the small joys that I have when being lost in translation. I would say that the most intense language barrier that I ever experienced was in China. My style of travel usually involves getting off the beaten path and traveling to places that most tourists don't go. So instead of going to places like Beijing or Shanghai, I opted for a city that lies in the heart of China called Chengdu. And without having any local friends there, this was a big mistake. No one, I mean no one that I met in the entire city spoke a word of English even in the airports or the giant hotel chains. So there was no one that I could ask for recommendations or get directions or even ask to call a taxi. There was absolutely no way to communicate with the locals there. And to top it off, I did not anticipate the internet censorship in China, so I didn't have an opportunity to download a VPN beforehand. I was completely on my own the entire time I was there. If you want to hear about that full experience in China and how I navigated through it, I am currently in the process of writing a book about all of my experiences traveling to every country in the world by the time I turned 21 years old. If you go to LexiLimitless.com slash newsletter, you can receive a free preview of three chapters of my book from Nigeria, Laos, and Yemen. So thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to sign up for that newsletter and also if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and I will catch you next week.